Madam Secretary. Uh, good afternoon. I'm going to go ahead and call this regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners of the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority to order on this October 20th, 2022. It is noon, so I do want to be respectful of everyone's time. So, Madam Secretary, will you please call the roll? Thank you. Chairperson Olivia Diaz. Present. Vice Chairperson William McCurdy. Here. Commissioner Scott Black. Here. Commissioner Valerie Craig. Commissioner Michael Dismond. Here. Commissioner Tick Cedarbloom. Here. Commissioner Dan Shaw. And Commissioner Luciana Turner. A quorum is present and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. Thank you, everyone. And um, before we start with today's agenda items, um, it is appropriate for us to uh, just take the time to recognize the time that uh, one of our f commissioners gave to serving with us up here at the dais on the board. And um, a lot of people don't know that it is a lot of uh, investment of time and readings and making sure that they're committed and, and staying with us every step of the way. So um, I would like to acknowledge um, our commissioner forever, even though I know her term expired in September, but uh, Ms. Commissioner Sharon Davis, uh, we want to just recognize your time here with us. Thank you so much for being part of us. And we know, we, you know the doors are always open here and we hope uh, to someday see you in another capacity. Um, but with that, I'll uh, toss it over to our executive director who also has some more information to share and some um, really cool things over there I'm, I'm well madam I'm chair spying. as always you you said it all but i'll, I'll try and add on to it uh, a little over four years ago commissioner davis responded or to why she would like to serve as a resident commissioner here at sonara she said i would like to give and serve for the betterment of all communities i also feel it's very important and responsible um, that a person holds such a position I want to give back what I receive. Commissioner Davis has indeed served on the board for the betterment of all the communities. She has been a dedicated voice for the residents and we greatly appreciate her contributions. In addition to reading that, I also had an opportunity just over the last few months to get to know uh, Commissioner Davis. And I, I, one of the things that I think that, of many things we'll miss, is that she's a very, very talented artist. And, um, you know, looking back, I really wish we had taken advantage of that skill, particularly as it relates to working with our, with our residents and, uh, and staff. So on behalf of all of us, I'd like to um, present this to Commissioner Dave. And I'm going to ask all of the commissioners if we can go down and also yep. thank her and Sorry. give it to her. Sorry. I forgot to ask you to bring your camera. Can you, do you want to get it? Okay. Okay, why don't we come up? We're going to have Tommy grab his camera. Commissioner, you want to come up and say a couple words? To be on the other end of the stick is simply. Okay. I served as a commissioner with all my heart, I really did. And I do appreciate all the help that I got. I think maybe a lot of times I might have stepped on a lot of people's toes, but I'm not sorry because it brought on a lot of different things that we did not know. And this job is so very important that anybody that holds this position should know what you are doing. All the employees of the housing, they should know they should not just read something and not know what they're reading. And for the people, I think I serve with all my heart for the seniors and the children and all adults. So I appreciate what I have done, and I'm glad that you appreciate me. Thank you. <laughs> You'll be missed. Okay. Let's take a group picture. Wow. Pleasure. 
pleasure. You're awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, handsome. <laughs> And I didn't give my commission, my fellow commissioners an opportunity to say anything to Commissioner Davis, so I'll go ahead and open it. I know um, our past chair, Commissioner Black, wanted to also say some words to you, Ms. Davis. Ms. Sharon, I just wanted to let you know, I, I joined the board right around the same time as you did, and we kind of learned together, kind of thrown in together. And I just want to say how much I respect your calm demeanor, your attention to detail, and your positive attitude because we had to face some difficult times and challenges and big decisions and you were just a steady voice of reason and of calm and of optimism throughout that entirety and for that i truly respect you and also i have a beautiful pot at my house that's a mosaic of broken pieces of tile that she made that i that i acquired from her and it's gorgeous and i love it so she is an amazing artist and a great friend thank you Seeing no more comments, uh, Vice Chair McCurdy. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for your service. Uh, we know that at times it can be uh, a bit tasking, and uh, it also requires a lot of attention to detail. And I just appreci appreciate the sincerity that you serve with and the questions that you ask and the thoughtfulness that you have with every item that comes before the board. And uh, I know uh, you don't regret any question because that is how we get to the root of what's right or what's wrong uh, on behalf of the constituents that we serve. So I just wanted to say thank you publicly. And I know this is not the end of your service in our community. Commissioner Sagerbloom. As long as we're going to talk, let me just say um, you've served through a time of a lot of turmoil here. So thank you so much for being stability. Uh, and I think now we have the stability that we've all sought. So. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Commissioner Craig, do you have some words for Commissioner Davis? Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Uh, one thing that I just want to really, really thank her for, uh, we were involved in something, and she speaks quietly. So she speaks quietly. She speaks strongly. And so she really gave me some great advice, and she stood on it, too. You know, oftentimes this person is quiet. There's no substance. But there's some studies in that there head. And I appreciate you very much, Ms. Davis. And I miss you. God bless you. She'll be missed and she wishes you well. All right. Any other commissioners? Commissioner Desmond. Yeah. The only thing I want to say, uh, she sat all the way at the other end, and I'm down here. So when I first came in, I really didn't have much contact until the director and his wise decision sent us to a training together and we weathered that training i don't know whether she was happy or, or unhappy or i knew i wasn't that happy but i was attending and learning and we became real good buddies from that point on and kept in close contact and uh more than just a commissioner she knows i consider her a close friend and we keep in good contact so she knows my feelings and God bless you and I'm just so glad to see you here because I've been trying to see your face now for a couple months <laughs> see, so thank you for all that you've done and how you've inspired me thank you all right I hope that was a good send-off <laughs> Best of luck to you, and I hope you stay in contact with us. Even though you've moved on from the board, know that you have a lot of friends here at the agency. I also want to say thank you for the prayers. Yes. Because I know you sent them back to you as Absolutely. Did you hear me? Go ahead and repeat it. Oh. <laughs> I want to say thank you for your prayers, because they was felt, and that was so very, very important. It helped a lot. Thank you. Absolutely. And just before we get to the f first public comment um, on the agenda item, I do have an update from our executive director regarding a change that will be adopted to the agenda, but wanted to give everyone, if, in case somebody was here to speak on an agenda item that's no longer going to be on, 
um, he's going to give us a preview of what's coming off. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we're requesting that we pull item number eight, the modification of the handbook. So we're going to take that off the agenda today. Thank okay. You. So knowing that agenda item eight is coming off, I'm going to go ahead and open. I'm going to go to agenda item two, public comment. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters that are posted to this agenda for discussion and possible action. If you wish to be heard, come to the speaker's podium, state your name and address, and please spell your name, the last na your last name for the record. And uh, is there anyone wishing to offer any public comment at this time? Seeing none, we're going to move on to agenda item four, approval of the agenda with uh, any emergency items or deletion of any items. And, oh, we... Is it related to the agenda items, Matt? Um, I don't know. I just know I'm a So there's another public comment period at the end of the meeting that is about any other items that we're not covering in the agendized items. It's okay. Okay. Oh. Oh, yeah, I skipped. Uh, thank you so much. That's why we keep our legal counsel here. I skipped number three. So we're going to go to the approval of the, la of, the of the minutes of the regular board meeting held on September 15, 2022. Are there any edits or comments or discussion on approving these minutes? If not, I'll take a motion. Motion to approve. I have a first from Commissioner Sagerbloom. Second. And a second from Commissioner Desmond. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, the motion carries. All right, now we're going to go to the approval of this agenda with inclusion of emergency items or delet deletion of any items. And we know uh, you can restate then yes. what we're striking from this agenda. For the record, we're removing number eight, which is the modification of this in our handbook. And that's it, correct? That's it. That's Everything it stays as is, so removal of eight. I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda as amended with the removal of item number eight. Okay, first by Commissioner Black, a second by our Vice Chair McCurdy. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. Aye. Any opposed? Commissioner Craig, are you a yay or a nay? I'm a yay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm a yay. Okay. Sorry. Just wanted to make sure because I. Okay. Oh, and we also have Ms. Turner online. Commissioner Turner? Yay. Okay, she's Yay. also an I. Okay, thank you so much. Um, we're going to go ahead and um, go to section two and review consent agenda items um, that are up for adoption as well. Are there any comments or questions? Or if there aren't from the board, I'll be willing to entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda item number five. I have a, a motion to approve agenda item number five. Second by Vice Chair McCurdy and a second by Commissioner Black. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. 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 Okay, that motion carries. That's the end of the consent agenda items. We're gonna move on to section three under um, our commissioner's executive director's recognitions. And uh, as we usually do, we are going to acknowledge our departed, Mr. Jordan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, since our last time together, these are the, the residents and participants that we've lost. Uh, Ruth Banks, Michael Contreras, Gonzi Dean, Douglas England, Mark Ford, Sheila Gray, Razia Cardona Guthan, Marshawn Henson, Elizabeth Leach, David Lynn Burke, Lynnhurst, Edward McConnell, Reggie Morgan, Gregory Nunley, Quinn Pace, Jacqueline Solis, Joseph Thomas, Ronald Ver Vereen, Benjamin Werner, and Marshall Wilson. And we'll just um, hold a moment of silence for all of those that have departed. May they all rest in peace. Um, 
We're going to move on to section number four. These are items taken separately from the consent agenda. And uh, what's left, I believe, on our agenda is agenda item seven, approval of the updated 2022 FSS action plan. And okay. to present to us, we have Lee our Quick. fabulous Lee Quick. Good afternoon, uh, Lee Quick Supportive Services Manager. Just want to let you know that I'm bringing to you an updated portion of the Family Self-Sufficiency Action Plan. The action plan was uh, brought before you this year, August of tw August 25th, and it was brought with the um, HCV Administrative Plan. The only addition here is that we added public housing family data, and the plan was submitted to HUB as well, and we just needed to bring it to the body for approval. That's it. Any questions or comments from the commissioners for Ms. Quick? Commissioner Sagerblum? Move to approve. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, I have a quick first from Commissioner Sagerblum and a second from Vice Chair McCurdy. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. Aye. I have a question. Oh, that motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Ms. No, thank you. Oh, Ms. Craig, you have a question on the motion or you have a question for Ms. Quick? As I stated before, he said he wanted my, my question is, uh, can you explain to me why it's, that change is being done? That's all I need to know. Can so why, know? why the information on the uh, families? There was why? an omission uh, when it was first submitted without the public housing data, so that had to be added. That's the only reason. I feel good now. I agree. Okay, well, let's redo it again. I'll take the... Move to approve. So we rescind the previous motion and now the motion is made by Commissioner Sagerbloom uh, to adopt these changes and approve agenda item eight and a second from Vice Chair McCurdy. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. 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 And that motion carries unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, we're going to then move on now to um, section number five, business items. So this is where we're going to Receive the report from the executive director on administrative and operational activities of the agency. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just have a few updates I wanted to to mention this afternoon. I wanted to remind us all that tonight we're having our family self-sufficiency um, graduation and event, and we're really excited. We have more than 20 uh, participants who will be acknowledged for hitting some goals and um, and and realizing some dreams, and we. I'm looking forward to us all that will be in attendance to recognize them. Wanted to recognize uh, Frank Stafford, who's up in uh, Reno at the uh, Nevada Housing Coalition Conference, their annual housing conference. Um, you know, Commissioner Segerboom and I were talking earlier just about being present and being in the room. And so the housing authority is being represented, you know, handsomely by Frank and to talk about the things that we're doing not only as it relates to housing here at the authority, but just the affordable housing um, um, landscape overall. Um, we're continuing to move forward with our CNI. That's the Choice Neighborhood Initiative that we're working with Marble Manor, the residents there. And uh, I'm, I'm just still super elated with how staff and the, uh, and the city is working together to make some really, really good things happen as we're doing with the emergency housing vouchers and the folks at the county. So the, the collaborations and partnerships are really starting to develop, or I should say continuing to develop. Uh, we're making some um, positive strides with um, the um, James Down Tower and the, um, the, RAD, the RAD conversion we're working with, working with our partners at Nevada Hand to make sure that we have a smooth and seamless of trans, um, transition from one property to another, knowing how important and knowing how stressful any kind of move can be, particularly for our seniors. And so we're working hand in hand with them. Uh, tomorrow, I'm sorry, yes, tomorrow and Saturday, we're having a hiring event over at the Flamingo office. You know, we're working with our uh, HR team in conjunction with the business partners uh, to really help us fine tune and hone in on our recruitment process. So uh, on both Friday and Saturday, we have an event um, going on there. And then I like to yield some of my time before I have 
uh, Paula come up and introduce our guest at Harbor House, I'd like to have Ava Cruz, uh, Ava, Ava Mitchell Crew come up and talk a little bit about our recent REACT scores. Uh, REACT is a physical assessment that HUD does on properties, and Ava will speak to where we ran it. Oh, you're clicking? Oh, thanks for clicking. <laughs> Good afternoon, honorable commissioners. I'm glad to be here with you this afternoon. My name is Ava Mitchell Crew, and I'm the Director of Public Housing Operations. The next slide, Tommy, please. So total public housing units is 2,149. We have three total senior developments, 14 family, and 386 scattered site houses. So the FAS, which is the public housing assessment, is basically a system that HUD uses to assess our performance in managing our properties. And the physical inspections of our properties are part of this assessment. So there are five inspectable areas when REACT comes out to the property. Oh, I didn't know it was over there too. <laughs> Oh, cool. Okay. Um, so the five inspectable areas, building exterior, systems, common areas, site, and units. So just to give you a couple examples, for building exterior, it could be roofs, windows, foundations. For building systems, it would be electrical, it could be exterior faucets, and it could also be sprinklers, like in the house when people have sprinklers for a fire. Common areas, it could be doors, graffiti, floors in common areas, site, erosion, fences, retaining walls, and of course the units, which we can have water heaters, countertops, HVAC, clog, clog drains. Okay, Tommy. Okay. All right, so here are our scores. It's a, it's I, we gave you kind of a historical mark, and I first want to say, please note, 60 is passing. Um, so James Down, Lamp 402, James Down, Sartini Plaza in the Annex, they received the 82 this year. Levy and Ada Brent received the 93. Hampton Court and Schaefer Heights an 83. Otto received a 71. Simmons Manor and Ernie Cragen, a 70. Marble Manor, Jones and Hullum, a 72. Sherman Gardens, Annex, Villa Capri and Marble, a 73. Scattered Sites, AMP 409, received a 65. Scattered Sites, AMP 16, a 63. Scattered Sites, and 310 received the 58. Now I want you to know with this 58, there was some circumstances that I felt that we should fight and I have sent an appeal to HUD. So we should be getting some additional points. And Wardell got an 87. So I wanted to point out that as the buildings age, what we're doing is lengthening the lifespan of outdated systems while keeping pace with current standards and technology for lighting, HVAC, and electrical. So just to give you kind of a little perspective, for example, Levy was built 1968, James Down was built 1972, Ernie Cragen 1965, so, and the scattered sites, their ages range from 1955 to 1987. So you can see how age can impact some of these scores. So things we are doing, because what's gonna happen is next year, um, REACT will be back for any scores that are between 60 and 70, 70 they'll be back next year. So things we're doing, well, we have one-on-one -on -one REACT planning meetings monthly with the managers where I, we are identifying and creating action plans based on the results from this uh, recent inspection. 
We're giving the maintenance supervisor a bigger role in the REACT planning. I had some instances where the managers relocated and we had to bring the supervisors up to speed. So I want them to have a bigger role in this entire process. We're doing continuous training. Um, one thing is that we used to train the managers in a sense where Amber would go on site and we would train them on the various SOPs and, and things, but we changed it now to a classroom setting. And um, what we did, two days Amber did SOPs, and on the third day I had various departments come out and talk about the relationship with operations and their department. And after that training, one of the new managers said, hey, I really feel like part of the team now. Um, something else that we're doing is I have Kevin, who's my maintenance superintendent, develop a mentorship program for new maintenance supervisors. One of the most important things going forward is I need to keep the agency why in the forefront so that everybody understands what we do and why we do it. And they can use that as a point of reference for us to move forward. So that's one of the biggest changes. Okay, Tommy, thank you. Come, no, go back. So some of the common deficiencies that we found at the various sites was site erosion. If you could see the bottom edge of the concrete, then possible point loss is seven points. You, uh, unit doors missing or damaged, knobs or any holes, possible point loss, two points per unit. So those were some common areas. So I wanted to thank the operations team because that's the staff who are out there supporting and serving our residents daily. And I'd like to thank Amber Baltley, she's back there, <laughs> and Kevin Muneur and Andre Coward. Kevin had taken ill during us preparing and Andre stepped right in and took his role and helped propel us forward. So a goal does not become reality through magic. It takes sweat, determination, and hard work. And that's what the team showed every day. Another thank you to Mr. Jordan and the executive team, especially the affordable department, Patricia Stevens and Danita Jerkins. They gave us their staff on weekends and the last two weeks. So we went all in, and that was very appreciative. I also want to say that the executive team was very helpful. Whatever we needed, they were there. Uh, one of the new managers said, I've never seen an agency where everybody was all in for RIA, and that made me proud. So that was really good. So again, thank you guys. <laughs> so, I found this quote by H.G. Luquak, no one can whistle a symphony. It takes a whole orchestra to play it. And that's what we did, the whole agency. So, thank you. Thank you. I just want to see if there are questions from our board members, and I see that um, Commissioner Black does have a question. Or comment. I don't know. I have a we'll question see. for you. Thank you mm -hmm. for the presentation. Thank you for the, the work that went into um, that process. I know it's extensive, and you know you said 2,100 plus <laughs> units. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of real a lot of real estate to care for, and so you know kudos to you and your team. Question for you: um, I was trying to calculate really quick what the average score was through all the amps to see if they're, you know, what the average or cumulative score is for the agency. I was curious if, if that it really is a relevant number. I just like averages. So I was curious about what the average was. And if you don't know this answer now, it's no big deal. But I was just curious how that average score or cumulative score would uh, compare to other uh, like PHAs you know, in terms of size and scope of ours. So, 
So they grade us based on AMPS, but part of the FAS assessment will get uh, additional breakdown and some more clarification. But as of now, I can only give you the collective AMP score. But I will research that, and when we get the complete FAS, I can give you that answer. And I, I think I may be able to shed some light, Commissioner. Um, to, just to put this in a, in a bigger perspective, there's somewhere between 60 and $80 million of deferred capital need in housing around the country. And um, there, there's a consistent um, ask and request from PHAs to reposition. Under our current environment where we're public housing, there's something called a declaration of trust that says that we cannot borrow against the asset. So because we're public housing in those 21 plus hundred uh, units Ava mentioned, there's limited things that we can do. Well, first of all, we get an operation subsidy from HUD that's never enough. And so we, there's only so much we can do. So given that 60 to $80 million in backlog, there's this constant push for us to reposition. Um, RAD is a way that we've repositioned. These buildings are old, they're obsolete, and um, RAD, Section 18, those are tools that we will continue to use to make sure that we have better housing opportunities. But I'm, I'm, I'm extremely proud that given where we are, so I guess if I had to sum this up, we're doing the best we can with what we have. I've been other places where people have said, well, you know, the worse it gets, the more mm -hmm. relief we'll get. I reject that wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. Me too. We're going to create an environment that's safe, clean, affordable, mm -hmm. and desirable for our residents to stay. And so hats off to the team for their efforts in pulling these numbers together, given the, um, the, the landscape we have to work with. Thank you. I just, are there any other questions? Commissioner Craig, I see your hand up. Make sure you speak loudly because you're not coming very, it, your, your audio into us is not very strong. Oh, good. Okay. That's, I don't hear that very often. Can you hear me now? Yes. Barely, Barely, but better. Okay. I'll talk louder. My question about the, the operations team and the individual, Kevin Manure, how do you say his name? Manure? Yeah. Let me say Kevin, who's a part of the operations team and he's now training individuals under him. Uh, what kinds of things will the maintenance team be doing, particularly in, in these old public housing? Uh, will things change or will they be better? So the mentorship program for the new supervisors is going to be uh, first like a broad overview of all the properties so that they know how each system in the properties will run. We're also going to work with them on customer service because that's very important. And we're going to help them in managing their team. So basically, they're going to learn the operations of the buildings, customer service, and management, how to be the best that they can be. Okay, then I have another question. Uh, I live in Jamestown Tower. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. And one of the things that no one thing I noticed because of the dilemmas, because it's an old building, is their dilemmas with the air conditioning and the heat. And oftentimes, another maintenance guy would come in and they wouldn't even know where everything was, you know? Oh, I don't work over there. And so my point is, will these individuals, uh, when they come to Jamestown Tower, or when they're called to come to Sartini, or leave the garden, will they know where certain things are? that would not put us as residents uh, in a major uh, negative situation. Is that going to be part of the training? Yes, it is, Commissioner. And what we've done is we had the um, manager and the current supervisor uh, put a book together so that when people come and they're not, they don't work on that site, Normally, then they could just go to that book and say, okay, so I have to go to the left and down the hall to find the elevator panels or whatever it is that they're looking for. I just want to say, woohoo! What's she say? She's woohoo! Oh. She's very excited. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any questions from you, Commissioner Turner, since I can't see you?
momentum that will um, keep the staff encouraged and keep the residents satisfied with their unit. I think she said something along the lines that she trusts mm -hmm. in her staff in carrying the momentum forward to continue to make positive change for all of our residents. I think that's what she that's said. That's what I gathered. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner yeah. Turner. Any other comments or questions? I just wanted to ask you really quickly because I know Wardell is one of our newer properties and I was surprised to see an 87 as our REAC score. So I'm like, uh, that just didn't make a ton of sense. So we can kind so of delve into it later. So I can tell you what happened why they lost some points is when they had walked the property the night before, there was no graffiti. When they came in the next morning, the REACT inspector was there and there was graffiti. So we lost some substantial points for graffiti. So that's why their score would have been higher, but we got hit with graffiti, we got tagged. That would explain it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ms. Mitchell crew. Okay. Thank you for all the work you do. Thank Appreciate you. it. All right, Mr. Jordan, anything else you'd like? Make sure your mic is on. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, yeah, I just want to have Paula Tucker come up and introduce our, um, our last speaker for the afternoon. Um, Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Paula Tucker. I'm the acting resident program coordinator and FSS coordinator for the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. Today, I'm here to introduce Ms. Gina Alexander Shanks Collins. She's a family service supervisor for the Harbor, which is a division of Clark County Department of Family Services. Um, the Harbor um, is a safe place for youth 17 and under and their families to receive guidance and referrals with a goal to prevent youth um, from entering the local justice system. They are one of our uh, members of the program coordinating committee that meets quarterly and they have actually done a pop-up um, where they did an on-site um, or they hosted an on-site event in May of this year at our Jones Garden property where they actually did on-site intake and provided um, uh, services or information on their services uh, to our residents. So um, we're very excited to have her here today to have her speak. Um, uh, so please join me in welcoming Ms. Gina Alexander Shanks Collins. Welcome Ms. Shanks. Well, hello. And she's also a former employee of the Housing Authority. <laughs> All right, yes, I am. And it is always an honor to come back to um, the Housing Authority. And when I was here, it was con uh, the city of Las Vegas. So I'm just excited to see that they've combined in their Southern Nevada Housing Authority. So it makes a great pleasure for me to come back and speak back to my family where I started as a social worker here at the Housing Authority and providing all these services that I am now providing again. And I just wanted to um, also for the folks that are listening in virtual, especially our commissioner, uh, so that you can kind of follow along as you don't have a handout, I did not do a PowerPoint. You can go to www.theharborlv.com and you can get the information that I handed out. I did do some notes so I can stick to my five minutes, so thank you. Again, my name is Gina Alexander Shanks Collins. I use all those names because I've done so much in the community under all those names. Uh, being a previous um, social worker with the Housing Authority and moving on to work in gang intervention, to work um, uh, for the Department of Family Services, a child protective service investigator, a, recruit, a recruiter, a licensing worker, a mediation specialist, working in the court system, um, in alternative sentencing division, and I can go on and on in all these various different positions. But uh, here at the Harbor, um, I love that the fact you guys call it the Harbor House. We always have people calling, but it gets it mixed up with there is an actual resident um, temporary residence for that's a harbor house. So we are the Harbor Juvenile Assessment Center. And I'm glad to say that we I'm speaking today because at October 17th was our six year anniversary of opening up the Harbor Juvenile Assessment Center. We are the first assessment center here in Clark County. We went to Denver, Colorado, and we modeled um, their, off, off of their assessment center, and we developed ours with a multifaceted agency approach. So now, 
we currently have five harbors that's opened up throughout Clark County. The information that I've submitted to you, you will see all the various different harbors throughout Clark County. And um, with that, we have operations of seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. We are free of charge. We service our youth from five to 18 years of age, 18 if you're still in a Clark County School District. We have also serviced youth as young as three years of age. And we have subject matter experts on site um, to help. I see with your families here at um, the Housing Authority, we do have families that's, that fall themselves in challenges with their, young, their youngsters. I t you talked about graffiti. That's something that we could help, help with. The good thing about us that we provide the supporter services in the areas that assist with crisis intervention and information. Our program goal is to link families to resources that will be essential in keeping youth out of the juvenile and child welfare system. We use a system care approach in order to combine a broad array of services and supports. Additionally, we work to reduce recidivism by providing early assessment of risk and needs and linking youth to evidence-based programs and providing ongoing case management. We work closely with the school system to address the school to prison pipeline solutions by offering diversion programs through the Harbor Assessment Center. We are working closely with the families to provide an individualized plan and mediation services that would address the needs of the youth instead of relying on the court system to develop a plan. Where, what I'm talking about here is we have the time. We have the time to sit down with the families and really, really dig in on what's going on um, with that child and also what's going on within the family system. Our goal is to develop that individualized plan that will meet that need. Our goal is also to link them to the appropriate services. We don't want to just give um, flyers to that family and let them make those calls. We want to do the referrals so the referrals can contact them. I always laugh and I say that we are the face-to-face -face 211. So when you call 211, you need to know what you need. When you come to the Harbor Juvenile Assessment Center, you just need to know that you have a problem and you need assistance. The good thing about it is free of charge. You can come back as many times as you want. And the ways that you can come to get involved in the harbor is three ways that we see. Through law enforcement, law enforcement will send citation misdemeanor citations that we can divert that young person from the court system. We also are working closely with law enforcement with our, our runaways and our kids that are um, facing domestic violence charges so that we can provide services right on time. They don't have to wait six weeks out, go to court, and then start getting service. We service right then and there. Also, we work um, in the community, community referrals through school, community-based programs, Department of Family Services, and we're hoping to get more referrals from the Housing Authority so that we can assist the families in your, your, your residence. As well as we accept walk-in referrals. Parents can refer themselves. Parents can come get prevention services, intervention services, and diversion services. They can make scheduled appointments. We're open seven days a week, again from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. We are providing very different, um, um, many programs that we closely work with. Right now, we're working with restorative justice program. If you have never really um, heard about a restorative justice program, we're really, really trying to um, get our young people to meet about their situation and forgiving and moving on so that we won't see that issue again. We have um, a program, the Truancy Prevention Outreach Program. We call it a TPOP program. That's under the umbrella that is managed by Yolanda Bennett, who was, um, has been essential in developing that program from the ground up and doing a great job where she's going into the homes and dealing with the barriers that our young people are facing um, with truancy, with chronic truancy issues, and really providing that support. Uh, we also teach conflict resolution and decision-making um, classes at the harbor. 
which we really address those five reasons um, why people come into conflicts. What is the five main reasons? And we talk about, you know, why are you competing? Why, why do you need to sometimes accommodate? Why sometimes you need to avoid that situation? And why sometimes, at the end of the day, sit down and compromise with your parents, compromise with that, that, that school, um, the teacher, and so on. But we, the biggest thing we want to get to is a win-win solution where we collaborate, that we are sitting down and actually families can sit down with their young people and have those courageous conversations that sometimes our young people don't feel that they're courageous enough to have and they need that, that third party mediator, which is our assessment specialist at the harbor, to sit down and have those um, hard conversations so that we can get to a win-win solution and we can start and then coming up with some solutions on how to move past the barriers and um, any type of issues. We are addressing the mental health and behavioral um, health programs that are out there and we're um, connecting them and linking with them. We have vetted providers through the harbor that we vetted, that we work with. We are developing more and more programs um, on daily. We have a recreational program with Eagle Quest that we refer our young people to. We accept undocumented youth and undocumented families that we are providing um, services and mental health services and paying for those services, mentoring programs that we are connecting our young people to, employment and alternative um, school solutions. We have a career coach right in, at the harbor that is assisting if that young person does not feel that, that a normal, um, everyday school um, scenario works for them that they would need to do an alternative school and they want to seek career. And then we have Division of Welfare Supportive Services at our harbor that will provide services to our families that they do not even have to go to their neighborhoods um, welfare services. They can come right there to the harbor as a walk-in. We have many um, services throughout and we've uh, from, for six years, we have developed and developed and we're working more and more to meet the needs of the community. The greatest part of the harbor is we developed a program that we no longer have to put our families in systems to wrap them with services. We can wrap them and prevent them from being in, in the, um, the, the systems of child welfare and juvenile systems. Um, like, again, coming from the housing authority and working um, as a social worker here and seeing the things that I used to see working with families and the barriers that we had, that we had to um, rely on Department of Family Services and we don't have to rely on them. I do work for the Department of Family Services as a supervisor and I'm located at the harbor as a subject matter expert. We also have other agencies that are located at the harbor that would be Nevada Partnership of Homeless Youth, Help of Southern Nevada, um, we have probation officers, myself, um, abuse and neglect. Uh, we have uh, people who are there for mental health from the state and we have the Clark County School District Truancy Department and um, also our, our um, people from Progressives that are school-based um, assessment specialists. Any questions? Commissioners, questions or comments? Commissioner Black. Quick comment. Um, I toured the harbor with Jack Martin about four years ago over on Mojave. I didn't know anything about it, and I was just absolutely blown away at the broad range of resources and the fact that you can harness the entirety of the family to help find the barriers and overcome those barriers. I said, we need one in North Las Vegas. Uh, he and I drove the streets of North Las Vegas. We identified the old fire station with the partnership of uh, our friends at Clark County, they provided the money, we provided the building, and that is really a great asset resource that I'm super supportive of and proud of in North Las Vegas. So thank you for that great work. Thank you, and you will see all the partnerships um, the, with the handouts that I um, supplied. And if you go on our website, you'll see all the other information. So we, we thank you for everyone who has poured into the harbor to assist. 
Well, we thank you for helping our parents and our families because as a parent myself, I know my kid doesn't come with a handbook when, you know, they're born. And sometimes we do have some challenges along the way. And this is a great space for parents who are really struggling. I know I've heard of many parents, I don't know what else to do. My child is doing X. And I just think that it takes all of us making sure that we're telling our folks that they're not alone and that there are amazing resources that can help them make things better. But it takes them getting more informed and taking action and wanting to seek this assistance and help. So super, super excited about all the work you do to make sure that our youth continue to be on the right pathway and get them in time and not down a road that then it's harder to get them back once they go down. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Com Vice Chair McCurdy. Yeah, no, just wanted to say thank you for taking the time out. Uh, I think the intersection of, you know, where you are now, you know, combined with your experience from your time here at the Housing Authority is definitely an asset that, you know, I, I strongly feel like we need to continue to, uh, I guess, increase the partnership between the two entities uh, because your clients are, uh, in many ways, uh, a lot of the constituencies that we have. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jordan? No, I was just concurring with, with what the vice chair said. You know, it's, if you all recall, like a few months ago, we started having these speakers come in. I think it's so important that, you know, you as policymakers, as well as employees and, and, and residents. Especially our property managers, because I think they observe a lot, and they could be uh, great connectors in our developments with these resources. I agree 100%. But having the opportunity to bring in partners to show, and I've said this over and over again, we cannot do this alone. We have to have strong and committed partners, and we thank you for your, your support. Thank you for the opportunity. And if you want to uh, submit a referral, it's right on the, on the website. Drop-down box, it's really easy. You don't have to do the work. Just put the information, and we make the calls. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Madam Chair, can I just make a comment? Yes, Commissioner Sagerbloom. Uh, you, you can stand up if you want. But uh, I've actually been working with them to, to have a pilot program to raise the age from 18 to 25. Because truthfully, the between 18 and 19 or 18 and 25, there's not that much difference. And our kids are staying longer with us. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, what they're doing is they're keeping people out of the, the criminal justice system um, and by bringing the, their find out what the problem is. And it would be fantastic if, if we can raise that age. So thank you for what you do. And thank you for looking into that because we do. And we ha even though we're helping the young people, their family has to bring them in. In order to help that young person, sometimes we have to help the family as well that are 18 and 25, up to 25, and, and providing additional resources. So thank you for. Anything else, Mr. Jordan? Yes, Madam Chair, I have one more acknowledgement I'd like to make. Um, wanted to thank my, uh, my peer, Troy Bouchard. Troy is the CEO of the Dallas uh, Housing Authority. And a couple weeks ago, uh, Anita Keys and Angela Yinchak and I spent probably two of the most impactful days I've had in a long time just doing peer review. Uh, we went down to Dallas. Our, our specific focus was the Section 8 department, how they do things like inspections, how they interact with landlords. And uh, if you can imagine, for a full day, we sat in a room had food brought in because it was so engaging and just learned a lot about what they do. Got a chance to brag a little bit about some of the things we're doing, but uh, to have two staff members go with me and talk with their peers, I think ultimately will have a tremendous amount of benefit for our, not only our staff, but for the people we serve. But I just wanted to you know, give a shout out for that peer exchange we did with the Dallas Housing Authority. And that concludes my report. All right, thank you so much. And with that, we're going to go ahead and open it to the final period for public comment. Uh, these, this um, period of public comment items raised here uh, cannot be deliberated or acted upon by the Board of Commissioners for the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority until the notice provisions of the open meeting law have been complied with. Uh, if you wish to speak now on the matters not listed on the posted agenda, please step up to the podium. Clearly state your name and address and spell your last name for the record. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start the first period of public comment. 
or this last period of public comment. Good afternoon, Phyllis Carpenter, 5200 Alpine Place, number five. Okay, um, last time you guys posted $23 an hour for your maintenance people. Like the last post I seen within a year, it was at like $48 an hour. So where's the rest of that money going that, that should have been paid to them? Next, um, the mold test. Have you read my mold test reports? Have you even seen them? Because they're not doing the same testing. They're, they're doing a fungal, a fungal count, not a mold count. Um, Ava, every time I've met with Ava, I've met with her on average once a month for the past few months. I've asked her for a HUD handbook. It's 4381.5. I've asked her for it every time. And I feel like when she meets with me, she'll take down these notes, but nothing is ever followed through. Just like that handbook that I keep asking for. Um, Public comments, McCurdy, you said last year sometime that anytime anybody got up here and said anything about public comments, the next month there should be a report on it. What happened to that? Um, the tiles still haven't been replaced in my building. Um, Ava and Miss Lee and Donald and Tracy, okay, it's a duly elected resident council. It's not a housing authority run resident council. And even if my other board members aren't there, we're in the dark. That doesn't mean I lose my position. That doesn't mean that they can go and hold nominations for my position. Um, yeah, it, it, I don't know what to say other than you guys act like you support us, but you really don't, or they really don't. They, we don't get the supportive services that we need. We don't get the training. We don't get anything. They'll meet with us. They'll blow smoke up our butt, and then and and then say, "Oh, sorry, you don't have a council now." So everything that was on the agenda from before, or everything that was in those meetings from before, doesn't really matter. To, we'll we'll take it up with the next resident council, is what they said. I don't I don't get it. I know that. Um for resident councils, we have bylaws. Those bylaws have to be adhered Correct. to, but that's not the purview of this board. Our own, the purview of the that. board is to make sure that we have an executive director that then advises his directors on the work that has to go. So, Ms. Carpenter, I'm, I'm not addressing it directly towards you. So, no, I'm I just know. saying because they get up here and they and they plod themselves on the back like they're doing something. The only time, the reason why they're running around going crazy when, for the react thing is because they're trying to hurry up and fix everything. Everything. You can tell when there's an inspection coming up because everybody's all hands on deck on the property because they're trying to get it up. And how do they take three properties and score it at an 82 and, and the Wardell is at an 87? Tagging, that's paint. That shouldn't score anything. That's, this is more structural stuff, I think, is what the REACT reports are for, not for, for visual, you know what I mean? And I don't know what else to say. Thank you, Ms. Carpenter. Um, I know that Mr. Jordan will check in with his team and make sure that we're, we continue to be on the appropriate path and answering questions as they come. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, my name is Stephanie Mitchell. This is Mary Mitchell. And I'm here to speak on behalf of uh, Mary Mitchell, uh, Mr. Jordan, uh, commissioners. Uh, <clears throat> you probably remember us, uh, we were here in April. Um, Mary is 73 years old, disabled, requires a 24-hour living caregiver. Mary has had her housing cho choice voucher since 1994 for 28 years. In the 28 years, Mary has lived with, along with her husband, who has recently been deceased, in two homes. The first one in Seattle for 20 years and her second one here in Las Vegas for nine years. She was displaced. Uh, she received a, a, uh, a notice from her property manager in January of 2021 stating that um, she was gonna, supposed to be moving out. Mary didn't put in any intent to leave or anything like that. And they found out that she had, um, that the housing authority had got her mixed up with another Mary Mitchell. So with that being said, that Mary Mitchell was scheduled to move out, but not Mary Mitchell. Mary Mitchell is homeless, displaced, and she's still displaced, okay? She doesn't have a voucher in hand. She doesn't have a termination in hand. We came here in April, and uh, we, some, you know, some of you came over to talk to us, and we requested a formal hearing, even an extension on the voucher that we had at that time. We don't have an extension, and we haven't had a formal hearing. If Mary found a house tomorrow, she doesn't have a housing voucher in her hand. 
We don't have a termination letter from the housing authority. Her housing, uh, her housing authority representative has not called her. My mother has never been homeless. I'm asking the board get involved and please help us get a resolve, help her get a housing voucher in hand. She doesn't even have a termination letter that says, hey, you're off, nothing. We need a hearing. We're requesting a hearing. We're requesting someone help us. We're requesting her have a voucher. And we've also, this is our third complaint with the housing authority. That's it. Do, would you want to say anything? No. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I want to say this. All this come from someone being lazy and negligent back in January of 2021. Someone didn't even take the time out. I didn't even know anything about this till end of January of 2021 when they called me and asked me had I moved yet. All this comes from being just lazy, you know? And I, and, think, nope. and I think her as a housing voucher resident for 30 years, only having two homes while she had the voucher, she deserves more respect than that. Beautiful programs you guys got. It's wonderful to hear all this, but you have someone that's been part of the program for 30 years. And ahead. now places yeah, that, wait, a lot of places that I have seen, and soon as you say you got a housing voucher because it's been neglected by other people for so bad, they don't even want it. They say right then, no. You know, so I don't think this is fair to me because somebody was lazy back in January 2021. Thank you, Ms. Mitchell. Um, there's no back and forth, Ms. Craig, in public comment, so we can't comment on the comment we're receiving. If anything, you can follow up with staff after our meeting. Hello, my name's Rebecca Luth. I've lived here my entire life, so I've never done this before. Um, I live at Sartini Plaza and for two years, and it's been terrible. I just had a talk with um, Mr. Jordan. He's one of the nicest men I've ever met, and I really think that he's going to try and do what he does. But in our apartment complex, we have drug addicts with machetes, guns, um, prostitutes everywhere. We've got people that are afraid to come out of their apartment, many, because they're scared to death. There's uh, syringes, heroin, just this morning maintenance went in. They're all over. People are getting beat up. An 80-year-old just got beat up in the um, washroom. A 94-year-old got beat up in the washroom. Um, so I wrote a few letters. And Mr. Jordan, they had me in the office on Monday. So he told me that we will um, have a security guard 24-7 at the front door, which is what I, I asked for three things, because it's bad in there. Um, I asked for a security guard at the front door 24-7, because even if there's things going on, at least he's on premise, because when we call him, it takes them an hour or two to get there. Um, Mr. Jordan has told me that he will put in a security 24-7, um, armed in the front door. Also some cameras. You know, when people in the police and anybody's looking for something, they go back and rewind the cameras, and that's how they find the people. I've been asking for all of this for two years, and... Mr. Jordan came. I think he really cares about us, and I just, I don't know what I want to, what else I want to say. I've been treated for a lot of PTSD. My doc, I have special doctors. And my doctor said that what's going on with my body, I'm in stroke mode all the time, I'm on pills, is because of the mental thing that this is bringing to me. I, so I just pray and I would lo love to see because I've been told things were 
be done before. And again, they're never followed through with. Um, all right, I got to go, but thank you so much, mm -hmm. Mr. Jordan and Ava and Amber for um, helping me, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Luth. Any others wishing to offer public comment? Seeing none, um, stay safe and this meeting is adjourned. Oh, it, oh, never mind. We have, you we know have what? The, the Rose, the Rose uh, Foundation meeting. Where is it? Thank you for it. Oh, the agenda's well, all the way in the back. <laughs> sorry. Okay. So you're the chair, Mr. Jordan, yes. of the Rose Foundation. So you can call that one to order. I like to call the uh, the meeting together for the Rose Foundation. Okay. Uh, can we do the roll call, please? President Olivia Diaz here. Vice President William McCurdy. Director Scott Black here. Director Valerie Craig. Okay. And. Uh, Director Michael Disman. Here. Director Tick Siegerblum. Here. Director Dan Shaw. Director Lushana Turner. Treasurer Fred Heron. Present. And Mr. Lewis Jordan. Present. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Quorum is present, and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. So, first thing on the agenda is uh, citizen participation. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to the, um, the work of the Rose Foundation? Seeing none, we'll go on to item three, approval of the minutes. Approval of minutes from the Rose Foundation special meeting, November 18th, 2021. Is there a... Uh, I move to approve. Second. It's been moved to approve by uh, Commissioner McCurdy and second by Commissioner Diaz. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. Um, then the approval of the, of the agenda. Let's see discussion for possible action. Uh, public hearing may be the... We'll go ahead and move the approval of the agenda. Yes. So I'll motion to approve that agenda item number four. It's been motioned to by Commissioner Diaz to approve the agenda. Is there a second? Second, second by Commissioner Desmond. Desmond. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, and then number five, discussion for possible action. Um, so the next item would be the approval of the Rose Foundation budget, yes. Um, in the budget, it's as, uh, as presented. Are there any questions on the budget? No questions, it looks like, from the commissioners. Okay. Just, um, I don't know if we have this information on hand, but I'd be interested to see, are we making any inroads in terms of securing more donations and contributions to the Rose Foundation for our self-sufficiency programming? Or is, do we see it going up or do we see it staying flat? Well, there's a couple things. Uh, we're, we're developing an entire new strategy. Um, Lee Quick and the team and I met the other day to talk about uh, everything from rebranding to bringing in a public relations firm to really help us help us identify donors and supporters in the community that will um, support the work that we're doing. So yes, as a part of our overall strategic effort, we'll see a more robust conversation with the Rose Foundation and, um, and, and, and really similar to what we've done in our board meetings, letting the community know the things that we're involved in, the people that we're impacting. And so as we move forward, we do anticipate seeing a greater um, a, a greater ask of the community and a greater amount of donors through the Rose Foundation. Lee, is there anything you want to add to that? I, I got a couple of things. Um, Director Director uh, Diaz, as you mentioned, had there been an increase in 
uh, donations over the past year. That this past year, we did receive more money than we received in the past few years. I think we received approximately about $35,000 in total uh, donations. I think our FSS program brought in about $20,000. So this budget is showing a small increase, about $46,000 projected for next year. But as Mr. Jordan speak, spoke of, we will anticipate bringing some additional money in. And Ms. Quick might want to talk a little bit about Lee that. Lee Quick, Support Services Manager. Uh, I would just note that, um, as I know Olivia uh, Diaz is very familiar with, the mayor's faith, um, the mayor's, mayor, <laughs> the mayor's fund for Las Vegas life. Uh, so there is just so much uh, that we've put into that. You know, from the city side, we're looking to do many things like that for our side. There's um, the housing authority is ripe for funding. There's a lot that can come in, so we just need to do more to get it in. So that's what it is. That sounds amazing. All right. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Up. Oh. Yes. Well, thank you for your assistance. Do we, we need to vote on this now or no? Yes. yes. Okay, so is there a motion? I'll move to approve agenda item five. A second. It's been motioned by Commissioner Diaz and seconded by McCur by Commissioner, by Fred Heron. I want to make a correction earlier on that motion. It was Fred who made the item three. Item three. So um, let the record show that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. And I think that concludes the report. Do you do a second public comment? Yes, I need to do a second public comment. Is there any comment from the, from the uh, audience on the work of the Rose Foundation? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay.